Hey, this is Nat, and we're off our couch in the oldest city in America, St. Augustine, Florida. Actually, where it all began for St. Augustine, on the grounds here of the oldest attraction in Florida, is where Pedro Menendez de Avales settled Spanish colonial St. Augustine in 1565. And this oldest attraction in Florida I'm referring to is the Fountain of Youth Archaeological Park. The Fountain of Youth is one of many attractions and fun things to do in St. Augustine, Florida. And be sure to subscribe and keep getting off the couch with us, please, because we have a lot more coming from St. Augustine, Florida, the ancient city, over the next couple of months and throughout the year. We've explored a lot of St. Augustine over the past few years. Yet, yeah, this is our first time visiting the Fountain of Youth Archaeological Park. And we want to sincerely thank Florida's historic coast for their assistance with this video. We have multiple exhibits to check out, plus wildlife to see, and we have 15 acres to explore. So before we get started, we'll grab a bite to eat at Smoke Southern Barbecue. You can also pack a lunch and use the picnic tables to enjoy your lunch and take a break. We didn't pack, uh, we want to try lunch here. So in addition to showing the menu so you can see all that's available, uh, here are our dishes as well. So my son has a four pound cheeseburger. It is $9.95. The side choices are french fries or a fruit cup. My daughter has a cheese quesadilla and these are both from the um, kids menu too. Uh, this is $6.95 and again, it comes with one side, um, french fries or fruit cup. And this is a sliced beef brisket platter for $14.95. Since this is a platter and it comes with baked barbecue beans, coleslaw, toast, and house pickled red onions, I thought London and I could get away with sharing this, uh, but no, it's not shareable in our opinion. And looking around at what others are ordering, we haven't seen everything on the menu, but we did see the Nathan's all beef hot dog, and that looked bigger and more shareable than our brisket platter. So if we did did eat here again in the future, we'd probably try that or we would just both pay for our own platter. <laughs> okay, so with lunch completed, uh, let's head into the attraction and start this day of discovery. Not only is this the site of the Spanish colonial St. Augustine settlement, this is also the area first explored by Juan Ponce de Leon in 1513. This is the site of the first Christian church built in the continental United States as well, and the first documented Thanksgiving feast between Europeans and Native Americans. Wow, uh, wow to all of those facts, all of those historical firsts, and these wild peacocks that are outside of the attraction. Uh, we're not even past the ticket booth yet, and there are still more inside. So let's get to it, let's check it out. Uh, we wanna be sure to mention that ample parking is available at the Fountain of Youth and it is free. So if you're not on the trolley and you want to visit an attraction in St. Augustine, where you don't have to worry about looking for parking or paying for parking, this is great. And let's talk about discounts. There are also discounts for active military with ID and AAA card holders. Residents of St. John's County are also entitled to discounted rates and children five and under are free. And the Fountain of Youth Archaeological Park is also pet friendly. Okay, so we are in and there's the first photo op to remember your visit by. Welcome to America's first colony and a warm welcome to Florida's oldest attraction. Uh, the Fountain of Youth actually has guest books dating back to 1868. And looking over to the other side, more peacocks. Uh, did you know that they eat peanuts? I didn't. Uh, you can buy peanuts right here if you have quarters or uh, they also sell peanuts in the gift shop. These are Indian blue peacocks and there are nearly 30 of them that freely roam the park. So we'll be seeing more of these beautiful birds. This park offers many exhibits and scheduled demonstrations and we'll go through some of them. Uh, we have to hit the spring house. We all know about the legendary Fountain of Youth, right? A legend has it that Ponce de Leon was searching for the Fountain of Youth, the mythical spring that brings back the youthfulness of any one who drinks or bathes in the water in 1513 when he traveled to Florida. Although I know this is a legend, part of me wants this to be so very, very true as I fill my cup up to the rim. Plus, this spring water that's coming from the Florida aquifer has over 30 minerals, so that's got to mean something good, right? 
wish me luck. <laughs> there is information in the exhibit about the source of the spring, about the Floridan Aquifer, Ponce de Leon's landing in 1513, and the establishment of St. Augustine in 1565 by Pedro Menendez with the help of the Tebequa, who had lived at this site for 3,000 years. We're also visiting the Navigator's Planetarium, which I find incredibly fascinating. The hourly show displays the night sky as it was April 2nd, 1513, the night before Ponce de Leon landed in what is now known as Florida. Without GPS, of course, or even printed out directions from MapQuest, uh, which a lot of us are familiar with from back in the day, explorers of the 1400s and 1500s used ancient navigational tools in the celestial bodies to travel across the oceans. Nearby the Navigator's Planetarium is the Discovery Globe. The Discovery Globe shows the routes that explorers of the 1400s and 1500s took to and from the New World on a globe that is 30 feet high. And right outside this area is also another peacock just strutting their stuff, just looking beautiful, just another normal day in the life of a peacock. <laughs> Another fascinating exhibit here are the Timucua burial grounds. While planting orange trees in the year 1934, a skeleton was found, which led to the discovery of an entire area filled with over 4,000 Native American burials, which then revealed the location of the first Christian mission in the United States. And this is the reconstructed church. The structure was built using local cypress. 16th century Spaniards knew that it was durable and resistant to wood-eating insects. The floor in the area around the church is crushed coquette. So the structure was built using historically correct methods as much as possible. And also at this part, towards the back of the park, is a reconstructed portion of the town of Saloy, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. When Pedro Menendez landed here, the Timucua were here and were instrumental in helping the settlement of St. Augustine to thrive and grow. Living history interpreters answer questions and explain what daily life was like in the village. In one anote, it could place about 14 to 12 people, and that'd be from one single or one family, so three generations. Okay. So they had a lot of family members here. Now I was explaining to them also that the families here weren't matriarchal; they were matrilineal. So all of the women in the village were related to one another, but they oh, wow. were always in charge. They were a very important part of the society because the way they saw it is they didn't want you intermarrying within families. Oh. So all the women would be related, but all the men in the village would not unless you brought, unless your brother married into that family as well. All of this is educational and really interesting. And we, even the kids, are enjoying going in and out of the different houses and exploring the town overall. The kids are also enjoying all of the demonstrations available at the park. Keep track of the time so you don't miss any of the action. Uh, you can learn about the different weapons used during the early days of Florida exploration and which weapons were most useful in certain situations. And during these weapon demonstrations, you can hear the cannon firing too. Uh, <laughs> That's scary. Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit. And London and I both believe the cannon firing is louder here than the fort, uh, Castillo de San Marcos National Monuments cannon firing and the Colonial Quarter experiences cannon firing, which are both here in St. Augustine. So this may be the loudest cannon firing in St. Augustine. <laughs> the cannon firings happen by the water and you can experience the water by walking the 600 foot Founders River Walk. This lengthy and beautiful walk provides excellent views of the Mantanzas Bay, the St. Augustine's Inlet, and the Great Cross, which commemorated the 400th anniversary of the founding of St. Augustine. For a bird's eye view of the water, my daughter and I are climbing the Watchtower. The Watchtower was used to see any impending threats. Now it's just used to enjoy gorgeous views of the beautiful bay and the landscape below. We will walk away from the gorgeous views from the Founders Riverwalk in the Watchtower to make it to a demonstration at the Blacksmith Shop. We learn that the black in Blacksmith just signifies the metal that blacksmiths work with, iron and steel, and they are both referred to as black metal because of the black oxidation that forms on them. And Smith 
comes from the old English word smite, which means to strike. Uh, we're being told it was a very popular profession, which is why there are so many Smiths. And Smith is actually the most common last name in the English language. I had to look that one up. I knew it was common. I didn't realize it was the most common. But according to Babbel.com, a language instruction authority, Smith is the most common last name in the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Wow. Mostly from the practice of being referred to by the occupation of blacksmith. In addition to all of the information that is given during this demonstration, the demonstration is also interactive and engaging. Another interactive experience at the park is the archaeological exhibit. Dig, 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 uh, just like an archaeologist. Well, an amateur archaeologist. I know the archaeologist had to be really, really careful while excavating. The point is, though, that you dig and sift until you can find something, hopefully. And we did find some treasures for all of our hard work. Uh, so those are the highlights of our fun and extremely educational day here. And we'll go ahead and head into the gift shop to pick up some souvenirs as we always do after a fun day. And um, the peacocks, uh, they're just sitting and walking right above the gift shop entrance. Uh, that's a first for us. <laughs> and this park is already known for so many firsts. I never thought I would see this. <laughs> okay, so walking underneath the peacocks to get into the gift shop. And I love the variety of shot glasses in here. I am a shot glass collector and there's so many to pick from. The peacocks are beautiful on the shot glasses. There are also toys, games, mugs, stickers, shells, keychains, items you normally can pick up in a gift shop and spring water because the last thing you want to happen is to get home, start feeling the slump, and realize the spring water did in fact work. And then not have any. That would not be cool. Then again, it'll give you another reason to come back and explore the grounds, the exhibits, the wildlife, the education, and the views that the Fountain of Youth Archaeological Park has to offer. As I stated before, these are just our highlights. Uh, there was so much to do, so much to see here. We did not realize how large this attraction is. Most of the time we just see and hear about the Spring House and the legendary Fountain of Youth, but there is so much more to learn and do here. And it's really hands-on and immersive as well. So if you love history, if you enjoy being blown away by facts, if you want to learn more about St. Augustine, then I highly recommend the trip. Uh, it was a bit of a cooler day today, really windy, um, but we all had a great time and we've been here mm, for the majority of the day. We got here around noon, um, pretty much closed the place up at six and no complaints. Everyone had a wonderful time. If you found this video enjoyable or helpful, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're planning a trip to St. Augustine or the Fountain of Youth, tell us all about it. Tell us what you're looking forward to, what exhibits you would like to see. If you've already visited, we'd love to hear about that experience as well. And if you're looking for more of St. Augustine, Florida to plan your upcoming trip, keep getting out the couch with us because next video we explore another attraction within St. Augustine, the Colonial Quarter. The Colonial Quarter takes visitors through three centuries of the formation and creation of St. Augustine. It is a collection of shops, restaurants, a live music venue, and a living history tour. So we'll be loading up on more than just historical knowledge. We'll also be enjoying more than our fair share of clam chowder fries and entertainment. So join us next video, please. Thanks so much for joining us this video at the Fountain of Youth Archaeological Park. Uh, thanks for exploring the first colony, learning about the Temaqua, the earliest known inhabitants of this land, witnessing multiple weapon demonstrations, and just watching these peacocks strut their stuff. We also want to thank Florida's Historic Coast for their gracious assistance with this video. We appreciate all of the likes, comments, feedback, shares, and suggestions. And we appreciate all of you joining us and making this all possible. Until next week, click on the video to see another one of our experiences. Thanks for watching.